In November 2020, Measure 109 passed in Oregon by 56 percent of the vote. When the people voted on the psilocybin measure originally, it has a clause in there that says local jurisdictions shall be allowed to send this to the voters. The Oregon Health Authority had two years to create psilocybin rules and regulations, and on January 2, 2023, they'll be able to accept license applications for psilocybin production and service centers. That's why this November, Deschutes, Jefferson, and Crook counties are putting the issue back on the ballot, and the cities of Prineville, Redmond, Madras, Metolius, Culver, and Lapine are voting on a two-year ban or a total ban on psilocybin production and services. In Deschutes County, 52.6 percent of the vote was in favor of the measure in 2020, but the 2022 vote is about where in the county it might be allowed. We heard testimony from some folks that said, we just want to buy a big rural property and put in a, 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 a the service center. You could spend the night and you could go walking in the in the woods. It's like, well, that's fine, but that's all land use. In all three central Oregon counties, a yes vote for the ban will prohibit production or treatment centers outside city limits, while a no vote will allow it. Mostly what I've heard from the community is the rules being very not clear, very unclear, and um, just their comfort with the science is, uh, is pretty low. In Crook County, most voters were against the measure in 2020. It went down by 65 to 35. So my guess is it's going to be something pretty similar to that. A similar story in Jefferson County, where nearly 60 percent of voters were against the measure. Jefferson County Health Services Director Dr. Michael Baker said the studies around psilocybin's effectiveness are exciting, but he doesn't believe the county has the infrastructure to support it. After a two-year limbo, November 8th will decide everything for sure. I don't know what's going to happen on this vote.